Hey guys, the One Piece Nation here today with my review of Boruto Episode 4. I'm doing this very quickly before I go to bed. My Boruto review last week, it didn't upload and I had already deleted the file. So that's why I didn't do it uh, quickly last week's episode was good, I liked it. Now, the reason this review was so late is because I didn't actually want to do this video. Because, okay, it's not that I didn't like the episode, and that it was just, like, just there. Like, I, I didn't really, I laughed at the stupidity of it, but in all honesty, it was just like a really stupid episode. I didn't really enjoy it. It was also a major letdown, because, I mean, the way, the way they were setting it up, even though it was like, uh, so like a boy versus a girl, child, like, a ton of, about a ton of eight-year-olds, like, what the hell do you expect? We're watching a show about eight-year-olds right now. Of course, the episode will be about stupid shit, like, boys versus girls. No, but, uh, I, I, just for the way it was built up, the logic we were all using was, Serata, Sasuke's daughter is a girl. Boruto, Naruto's son, is a guy, it's a boy. They're going to fight. It's going to be awesome. That's not. They bicker. When by the way, the bickering, the way they bicker is actually amazing. And the way Serata, like, insults Boruto is very similar to insult Sakura would use when insulting Naruto. But the way they do it, like, their gestures and movements, and then the way Boruto talks back to her, it really feels like the way Naruto would respond to Sasuke. So it's this really weird mixture of the way Sakura treated Naruto in part one with a little bit of Sasuke's tongue and the way Boruto, Naruto treated Sasuke. It's really cool. It's a really cool dynamic. But yeah, the whole episode is pretty much about a bun. There's like one point where Chino you know, is clearly like, he made this like, I'm not sure that was intended. I hope not because they're eight. But he makes a sexual innuendo. In front of like, in the group of eight girls, he's like, You think you gotta put the dodges and the bun together? I'm just sitting there like, well, like well, I'm, I'm watching like a 30 year old man make sexual innuendos. To a, I, I'm watching a 30 year old man make sexual innu innuendos to a group of eight year olds. Like, what the hell am I doing with my life? <laughs> no, but uh, I watched it the first school of the morning, and to be honest, it was, I, okay. I wouldn't recommend skipping it, it's enjoyable, but I watched it, and then proceeded to forget it existed five minutes later, until I saw Sawyer 7 Magic review of it like ten minutes ago, and I was like, oh my god, Boruto happened, I should review that! I mean, it occurred to me briefly like four hours ago, and I was just like, I'll do it later. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I had like no opinion on it. I, I, was, I was disappointed we didn't see a Boruto for the Serata fight. I thought the ending was really shitty. I feel like I really hope they're not going to use Bajonin like this in this series. Because, like, we get this big moment. Boruto summons, like, the evil creature thing. I'm not really sure what it was. And the snake that he summoned goes wild. Which, by the way, where the... Where the hell did Boruto get the snake summoning contract? Also, wasn't it implicitly stated earlier in the series? This episode had a lot of plot holes. I may do a video probably this week or next week about all the plot holes in this episode. But, no, wasn't it stated? What, what, was this the whole way Jiraiya got to Mount Miyaboku by pursuing the stuff and just out of contract? Like, then something really bad happened when you, like, aren't you really transported to a random southern location or a random location when you do that? So why is it that Burrojo just does it? Also, where the, where the hell did he get the snake summoning scroll? Last time I checked, at least for the frog, toad, and slug summon, those scrolls are, are, are in the nasty of Naruto, Sakura, and Sake, right? I would assume. Because they, I mean, they all, these, no, Jiraiya's dead. Sake has surpassed Naruto, and Sakura surpassed Tsunade. I would assume the three of them have the scrolls. So, I mean, Durai, if he had summoned the uh, frog, I would be like, okay, Nar maybe Naruto let him sign the scroll. I can, I can buy that. It's bullshit, but I can buy it. Uh, Serata summons a slug. I'm like, okay, Sakura could just give her the scroll. I can buy that bullshit. It, it's bullshit that, that they would just, that they would give it, that Naruto or Sakura would give an eight-year-old the chance to sign their summoning contract. 
considering they didn't Stockwood didn't do it until like 13 or 14 yards or didn't do it until he was 12. But whatever. Like, the kids are pretty good. But no, he's coming to damn snake. But only, okay, but only two people that have, could possibly have that are Ruchi Maru and Sasuke. Neither of which are in the village. Both, one of them is God, probably in another dimension right now. The other one's a pedophile. A pedophile snake man that is, I'm pretty sure is in a woman's body at the moment. Something in an underground bunker with, with a woman that likes to bite people, a guy made of water, and a guy with serious anger management issues. So if you're telling me he got the snake stubbing contract, you can go to hell. That was stupid. I mean, that's about it. I mean, it was stupid. Um, I hated the ending, how come harm? Uh, you, have, you have all this build up, and you're like, oh my god, are they gonna have like an epic fight or something? And Boruto, me, I actually had this cool idea. I was like, Boruto and Dorado are gonna pull a Naruto and Sasuke, are going to team up and kick his ass without communicating. It will be some like Naruto and Sasuke shit, it'll be really cool. And no, Boruto and Dorado kinda just stand there. Kamahamaru just shows up and it's like, Rasenga! And it's Rasenga's the damn thing, and it's just like, Bitch, please, I'm, I'm like in Naruto 2.0. Be like, can you, but, okay, oh, well, by the way, apparently Komahamaru can uh, stub and toes now, with apparently that's the thing. Um, I mean, it's, it's not too far fetched than Naruto. It's more of a question of when Naruto would teach him. I guess there was enough time, but whatever. Um, Yeah, that's about it. Shino does teach him how to stub and weapon, which I found funny. Because they're eight years old, and they're learning how to do what 1010 10 did for 700 chapters. For 700 chapters, all 1010 10 did was dubbing weapons. And these eight year olds are learning how to do that. So you're telling me, 1010 10 was like eight when you're chilling in the academy. And the guy was like, I'm gonna teach you how to dubbing weapons, you guy. So she learned how to dub the weapon, and then she never did anything ever again. She never learned anything. She never mastered another ability. She just summoned the weapon. That's all 1010 did. I thought that's funny. Oh, by the way, uh, Shino renews his I stuck card this episode by sucking. Look at Shino, and he sucks. That was nice. Because, you know, like, yeah. Like, he, he sets up the battle between the boys and the girls. And then when it gets completely out of control, Kumahamaru has to come in and save everybody. Now, uh, I also would like more Naruto, like, to see Naruto, like, I would have liked to see how many Naruto are killing it and all this, uh, Naruto, your son destroyed the entire academy. Like, why can't we see that? Like, it's still related, it would also show Naruto's relationship with Boruto, you would get really mad, you know, having Naruto have an argument about it, I don't know. <coughs> um, yeah. So, uh, the boys and the girls do appear to learn their lesson about gender equality, which is great! Gender equality for all! But, uh, can, why don't we talk about the uh, millions and millions of Ryu, which is the no Ryu or Ryu, the current name, I'm not sure which, but it's the current name in Naruto work. Why don't we talk about millions of Ryu, of Ryu, that, uh, the damage they cause? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, alright, the students learn about gender equality. I'm more concerned than anybody was in that school building when it collapsed. Did anybody die? Are you telling me that group of children, of like 20 kids, were it? There was not another soul in that building? Because it's, oh, that is bullshit. But, um, yeah, that is all. I'll do a prediction video for episode 5, I guess. Later, uh, One Piece review and live reaction tomorrow. I'll be doing a double review and double reaction. Meaning it will be up late because they're each going to be like 50 minutes long. That's gonna take me like, like two hours to record, but yeah. That's all for that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation signing out. Have a great day, guys. And yeah, Boruto.